One of my favorite dividend growth companies, American Express, just reported earnings and they blew them out of the water. So let's go and look at their numbers that they reported. We'll be looking at some financial metrics and then we'll be looking at why I decided to buy additional shares of American Express. So if you like to hear about that content or if any of these topics interest you, I encourage you to hit that thumbs up button and follow along. So without further ado, let's go and dive right into the numbers. So American Express reported their sixth consecutive quarter of record revenue up 13% from a year earlier to $15.4 billion. Now their third quarter earnings per share or EPS rose at a whopping 34% to a record of $3.30. These strong results were driven by their continued growth in card member spending and best in class credit performance. Momentum supports the company's long-term growth plan. So what we're gonna do is go and look at these numbers in detail and again, if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I love American Express. It's one of the key holdings in my stock portfolio. And I'll leave a link to a video that I did on American Express's business model in the top right hand corner, which you should be seeing right now. So let's look at the numbers. So the quarter ended 2023 in September 30th, and then 2022 as well for the same quarter just a year earlier. And for the nine months ended September 30th, 2023, compared to 2022 here as well. Now the dollar amounts are here, and the percentage increases or decreases are in these columns. So the total network volume in billions of dollars, as you can see quarter over quarter or year over year, up a nice 7% and year to date for those same nine months up 9%. So they are hitting those record revenue numbers. Now the total revenues net of those interest expenses rose at an even faster rate, 13% and 16% respectively. Now one point of concern here that investors in American Express, again, even in other financial companies or financial institutions that you should be aware of is they are setting aside a larger amount or a provision for credit losses. So it did rise significantly at 58% here. And again, looking at the nine months ended, that is a large, large increase in the provision for credit losses. However, even with this large increase in the provision for credit losses, they were still able to have amazing net income in my opinion, 2.4 billion here compared to the 1.8 billion in the previous year, up 30% here and year to date for that same period compared to the last year, for the same period, again, up 8%. So great, great net income growth here, in my opinion. And the diluted earnings per share or per common share, again, at a nice, nice 34% increase year over year. And for the nine months, for, for the respective nine months of that same period, up 11%. And they were also able to buy back shares, reducing that share count by 2%. So great, great numbers here, in my opinion, from American Express. So... We're gonna be looking at their consumer services build business. So again, looking at the breakdown of their consumers and that build business that they had in the United States. So as we can see here, I really like this infographic here. We can see that the total uh, portion or groups of people that are actually their US consumers, they're split between millennials and Gen Z, Gen X and the baby boomers. So as you can see here, percentage of a total they're roughly around the same, around that 30 to 35% range per each gener each generational category. So that is great diversification of revenue, in my opinion. They are folks, they have a strong, strong client relationship with each of these generations. And why that is important is once these older generations, you know, tend to get into a later phase of life and possibly when they pass on, they have then still established the relationships with the next generations, ensuring that their products are used for generations to come. So a great infographic here in my opinion. And again, year over year, it's an increase of 9% in this US consumer services build business. All right, so let's look at their growth plan. So in January, 2023, 2022 actuals were revenue growth of 25% and earnings per share of 9.85. So again, they were able to hit these numbers. Very, very great performance. Now, 2023 guidance, they reaffirmed their guidance here recently, stating that revenue would still grow in this 15% to 17% range for this full year. And that results to about earnings per share between $11 and $11.40 per share. So they reaffirmed this guidance. So again, they believe that they're going to have no problem hitting this 
uh, guidance here that they've communicated to us as investors. Now their next year aspiration, they, they still think they're gonna grow revenue in excess of 10% and their earnings per share growth in the mid teens. So this is great. In my opinion, they're still communicating growth for next year. Again, in this macro environment that has been up and down and all over the place, they are still communicating strong, strong growth and strong earnings per share growth. All right, so we're gonna jump to Seeking Alpha here and look at some numbers. Uh, if I like to use Seeking Alpha for my financial metrics and financial analysis. It's a great, great tool. Uh, I'll leave a link for you to sign up for Seeking Alpha. If you like, you get a special offer if you sign through my channel. And full disclosure, I do get a referral fee if you do use my link to sign up. So please keep that in mind. Now, now here on Seeking Alpha, we can see that over the past five days, uh, it's down about 6.73% their stock. Over the past month, it's down about 11.34%. And over the past six months, it is down about 13.30%. So the stock is declining heavily. And just on Friday, it was down about 5.38% after these results. Now, again, I think this is an overreaction to that increase for provision for credit losses and the macro state of the economy. So again, it's trading near its 52-week low, $141.57, compared to the 52-week low of $138. It did reach as high as $182 within this 52-week period. Now, we look at the price to earnings here. It's trading at a 12 price to earnings on a forward basis, so not an expensive stock here, in my opinion, for the quality that you get with American Express. The dividend here is a nice two dollars and forty cents, which represents a one point seven zero percent yield. But again, when you're investing in American Express, you're investing both for dividend growth and capital appreciation, not just for the current yield. Now, let's go and look at those dividends in a little bit more detail. So we're gonna look at the dividend summary here. So we can see that the dividend yield, like we saw, was one point seven zero percent annual payout of two dollars and forty cents, a nice low payout ratio here of twenty one point seven six percent. Five-year dividend growth rate of 10%, very respectable. Dividend growth of two years. Again, we're going to look at why this is only two years. This is skewed because of the COVID period. They actually did not grow their dividend. They still paid it out, but they just kept that dividend at the same rate. And we'll look at that when we look at the dividend growth in momentarily. So dividend growth here. Again, when we're looking at this dividend growth, we can see that the 10-year dividend growth rate at a nice 10.43%. Five-year dividend growth rate at 10.01%, and the three-year dividend growth rate, 10.49%. So it's roughly been about 10% uh, for the past 10 years. And again, that's a very, very respectable dividend growth rate in my opinion. Now let's go and scroll down and look at the dividend growth over a 10-year period. So as you can see, it is like a stepladder continuing to grow up. They keep growing this dividend, allowing us as dividend growth investors to lock in a nice yield on cost. So as you can see here though, during the 2020 and 21 period, this is where they kept that dividend unchanged. They did not grow it. However, they still paid it out. And then shortly after the COVID period, they resumed their high dividend growth essentially right away. So great, great dividend growth here, in my opinion, from American Express. Now dividend safety, us as dividend investors, we want to make sure that we are investing in companies that pay us dividends, but we want that dividend to remain sustainable or safe. We want to make sure that the company is not putting financial stress on their operations by paying us a dividend, therefore allowing them to continue to grow their dividend and pay that dividend out to us over time. So on a cash dividend payout ratio, 11% here, and the payout ratio based on gap is 21%. So super, super low dividend uh, payout ratios here, a lot of room to continue growing that dividend without putting any financial strain on the company, in my opinion. So that is the dividend growth rate. And again, you can see the dividend payout ratio here over the past five years. It did stem up during that 2020 uh, period and then back down here again at that more sustainable 20% range where they've kind of been hovering over the past five years. Let's go and look at the dividend history. As we saw, they did state that there was that consecutive years of dividend growth of two years, but again, that was because of the COVID pause and consecutive years of dividend payments, 34 years. That is a long history of paying dividends and just amazing, in my opinion, a great, great track record here by American Express. And if we look at that dividend history again, 
just like the dividend growth, it is a step ladder, just continually increasing those dividends over time and just locking in a lower yield on cost for us as dividend growth investors. Now let's go and look at the ratings here and I wanna see what Wall Street is saying about the price action. So as we can see here, the low price target for American Express is $125. The high is 201, this being an average of $173.95 as a price target, which could potentially uh, suggest 22.87% of upside. So when we look at my portfolio here, we, I'll zoom in so you can see that a little bit better. But American Express is one of the key holdings in my YouTube dividend growth portfolio, it represents about 5.1% of this portfolio. And I did actually add a couple shares on Friday once I saw it dip down to what I consider to be reasonably valued levels. And I will continue adding to this position as the price seems fit or as I believe it is still deeply discounted. Again, I'm trying to be opportunistic here and increase my American Express position because I believe it is reasonably valued, has high levers for growth. It will continue to grow those dividends along with their business. As the business grows, I believe the dividend growth will continue and they have been buying back shares at a rapid pace. But I would like for you to let me know what you think about American Express. Is it a company that you've been looking at? Have you analyzed it? Have you been sitting on the sidelines and are possibly waiting to jump in? Please let me know in the comments section and I would appreciate having a discussion there. So that was the video. If you enjoyed it, I, hit you, I encourage you to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, bye. Please note, I'm not a financial advisor by any means. All this information was merely for your entertainment purposes only. Please consult a financial advisor when investing. Investing is inherently risky and I am not liable for any investing decisions or losses that you may make or incur. Thank you, have a great day, bye.